Hello everybody. Today I'll discuss about the processing of the optics material. So usually optics materials we can understand the uh, mainly the processing of the glass or glass product uh, as well as the the processing techniques for the fiber optics material. So these are the most uh, fiber optics is most widely used uh, component in the in the uh, optics. So therefore we'll try to discuss uh, our discussion will be focused on this mainly these two aspects. Now the processing of the glass, we know the glass is an optical material. So uh, this processing of the glass is uh, sometimes is different from the material. So usually we, in case of the metallic material, we usually melt the material and then cool and there must be some kind of the this uh, solidification temperature and it will try to produce some kind of crystalline solids. So but in case of the glass, in this case, once we reach the liquid state and it becomes more and more viscous and usually it turns about the soft plastic having some values of the viscosity here and finally it becomes very hard and brittle this is the typical characteristics of the glass so therefore in this case we have already discussed about the glass transition temperature so therefore uh, we can not observe uh, like a very sharp melting point temperature or freezing temper uh, it's better to say the sharp uh, freezing temperature or melting temperature which is associated with the glass unlike the material because material we have there is a sharp uh, freezing temperature or heat uh, melting temperature but uh, that kind of freezing and melting temperature uh, is not exactly the available in case of the glass also in this case uh, the glass actual particular temperature it becomes like a solid and then it becomes liquid so we generally known as this uh, transition it becomes very soft and uh, this then after when it is soft then we take the deformation of the glass to take the another soft so that that particular temperature is actually known as the glass transition temperature so whatever processing of the glass actually we take the reference of the glass transition temperature as compared to the melting point temperature for metallic material now we try to because of the unique properties of the glass maybe glass can be cast it can be cast it can be rolled also and it can be drawn because it have different level of the viscosity at the different state and it can also be press like a metal also so all this kind of the operation can be performed uh, in case of the glass but apart from this thing it can also be blown with the application of the pressure so it can be blown out to take the particular shapes that's why these are the different techniques can be utilized for the processing of the glass but here in the general float glass kind of can be prepared like that for example raw material is put raw batch is put here inside and then we create the uh, molten glass also using the furnace heating but after that we transfer it the, through the rolling operation transport create the the liquid metal uh, in, in this case so uh, in the form of a liquid metal we place it using the heater and then we take it out and here we, we can put some kind of the control atmosphere so that is also important during the cooling phase what uh, you can control the atmosphere based on that the final shape is usually formed and uh, uh, in that case uh, once it's to make a flat surface of the glass and we can cut it taking the different uh, pieces so this is the typical procedure for the making the the float glass now apart from this thing that there are several already mentioned that different methods can be applied uh, can be applied in case of the glass processing one is the casting process so casting process we understand that is the pouring of the liquid material into the mold and in this case the similar kind of the procedure can be uh, applicable in case of the glass also. So one example can be that uh, the casting of a 200 inch diameter telescope uh, disc uh, is, uh, is actually produced and in this case but uh, when there is a such a big diameter uh, big size telescope uh, using the glass is, is produced in that case definitely it, there is a tendency to form the crack or this kind of the difficulties faced during this production the formation of the crack or there might be possibility of the crack formation and that because uh, if it reaches to the elastic range with temperature gradients present so basically if temperature gradient is there and if reach the elastic stage during the cooling phase this may create the formation of the crack such a big structure even cracking occurs as temperature gradients equalize over the time also so cracking might occurs over the time so this temperature gradient gradually diminishes but this uh, with respect to the cracking may also uh, occur uh, even after a uh, um, after a certain point of time so therefore removal of the material during the grinding and polishing so if we perform the grinding operation and performing um, polishing operation associated to the glass plate that might 
create some kind of the surface distortion might happen. So, these are the difficulties for the processing of the glass for, to produce a big structure, but in general if you try to avoid all kind of the difficulties then this glass can be processed like that, it can be uh, cool, it is a very slowly and just to avoid uh, too much of temperature presence in the too much of temperature gradient or too much of the change of the temperature with respect to time. So, that is why usually this is the usual measure to move or uh, to cool very slowly uh, in case of the glass such that we can avoid the formation of the cracking or other, uh, other defects associated with the processing of the glass. Similarly, rolling can also be performed for the processing of the glass. So, in this case, in case of the window glass and the plate glass, in that cases we usually perform the rolling operation. In this case, rolling up for the rolling operation, these uh, raw materials are actually melted and, and another at the one end a large from a large tank furnace and then liquid glass, liquid glass flow in the other end with respect to the over the time and that actually in that cases we allow more time such that the bubble can escape uh, from the uh, liquid glass. Now once sufficient viscosity is achieved for this cases then we perform the rolling operation. So, that means we need to identify what can be the right viscosity to perform the rolling operation in case of the uh, glass component. Now, if you once you perform the rolling operation then roll sheet can be passed through a long annealing furnace. Annealing furnace that means further modification uh, of the properties can be performed using the when it is annealing operation usually done. So, when long annealing furnace it is passed that means control temperature the heating is done and but uh, heating or cooling can be done. But this process is known as the annealing furnace that is the, the process the layer and in that cases mostly the purpose of the annealing is just to reduce the, the residual stress which is similar in case of the metallic metal also we perform the heat treatment operation. So, just to um, reduce the residual stress. Now, in the initial form the roll material can be used for the ordinary window glass, roll material can be ordinary window glass, but it can produce the plate glass that actually requires excessive grinding and polishing of the roll material. So, if you want to represent in the form of plate glass in that cases probably this roll glass has to perform a grinding and the polishing operation for this roll material. Similarly, drawing operation can also be performed in case of the glass also. In the cases drawing of the glass tubing is similar to the rolling process. So, we, want, we try to make it the, the drawing and the glass tubing similar we can perform the rolling operation. In this case proper viscosity has to be maintained and that can be maintained uh, by proper heating and from the furnace we can maintain the proper viscosity uh, and then we put it this uh, uh, viscous uh, glass uh, in case of through the ceramic tube or we, through, we can pass through the mandrel such that tube can be performed. In this case refractory cover rollers pull the glass in this cases refractory cover so that minimum interaction of the uh, between the roller and uh, glass can happen that is why you can put the refractory cover rollers and that actually try to pull the glass and even there is air blowing can also be performed to in this cases through the, the air blowing through the mandrel uh, prevents the tube form collapsing after passing the mandrel. In this case maybe air blowing can also be performed, but this blowing operation has to be restricted with some other with the geometrical shape can be restricted making a kind of die and through that we can control the shape of the this glass component after air blowing. So, even after that annealing is also required the post processing operation and just to improve the properties or reduce the defects associated with the glass. But pressing is also accompanied by metering a job of glass into the uh, metal mold also the pressing can also be done and we try to compress it and uh, removing it for the annealing. So, that means simply we can put the press also to take the desired shape uh, when within the mold it is there then we even we can perform the pressing operation just to take the, the shape and after that we can removing it and place to the uh, annealing operation. Here we can do the press and the blow mold also the combining these two we can uh, pressing as well as the blow both operation can also perform uh, for the glass product and this is widely used method and that actually make the glass containers this is uh, in this case. So, how it works a gob of glass is basically fed into the mold. So, here the gob uh, I think certain vis viscous glass it is placed uh, in this uh, within the mold also and then bottom half of the mold is removed. So, after pressing the bottom of the mold is uh, removed uh, in, in this case and then a mold of the final shape is 
uh, basically substituted it means that the gob is under this mole cavity in this case and this close it and the, sometimes we can perform the pressing operation here uh, and this another cylindrical object we can put the pressing operation just to spread it and then it creates some kind of the suspended prism like structure here and after that uh, we close the bottom part and from there we can we can accommodate the the control the size or amount of this glass and from the top we can perform the compressed air so compressed try to blow it out and take the disperse through the attached to the mold wall so then after attaching the mold wall of course the air pressure can be controlled such so the thickness can be controlled also and it takes the final shape of the mold wall so uh, a partly from glass at this stage is called at the parition and the blow operation gives the glass the desired contour that we have already made this desired contour but uh, the partly from glass at this stage is known as the uh, in this case partly from glass is usually from that is more than the uh, parition mold uh, in this case so to take this particular uh, partly the glass is formed that's why specification for glass products for variety uh, based on the end user so in this case different types of this thing for example window glass and the plate glass in this case is cheap requirements is the flatness transparency is important here and of course free from any bubbles and the absence of the any kind of the harmful stresses for example residual stresses uh, to prevent any kind of the breakage and distortion so these are the primary concern when you try to produce the window and plate glass similarly when containers we want to produce in this case is the containers the accuracy of the volume is more important such that we will take the desired shape of the this component desired thickness uh, can be maintained in case of the when you try to produce the glass container similarly chemical wear in, in this case is necessary requirement the composition that will not uh, corrode so we have to choose the composition in such a that will not corrode when you make the chemical within this container so similarly when thermal shock is is a consideration in this particular case so here we try to look into this choosing the material what can be the, the coefficient of the thermal expansion that is more important parameter uh, when thermal shock is in uh, important similarly the specified material in this particular case is the pure silica or high silica glass uh, is the better choice when that may be possible to absorb the thermal shock in any application then optical glasses in this case the optical glasses most important parameter has to look into the index of refraction so that is more important when you choose one particular uh, glass material for the purpose of the optical uh, glass in this case now electrical industry they will choose the glass but in this case is critical factors the what is the dielectric constant for this particular glass so that it will try to produce the some kind of the insulating as insulating material uh, for, uh, for that case so that's why there are the different uh, types of the glass and their applications area and of course all these cases the which is the important factor need to consider when you try to produce the uh, glass uh, component similarly glass ceramics also there the glass ceramic is the commonly used in case of the household such as the um, that uh, trade name is the uh, pyro cream in that case we can find out the application of the glass ceramic so it is also very good thermal shock because we say the glass ceramic so in ceramic itself having the very good uh, amount of the thermal shock absorbed and because the thermal shock can be absorbed if the metal is having the low thermal expansion coefficient so that is actually available in case of the this uh, ceramic glass ceramic apart from this good mechanical strength also another requirement can produce by the glass ceramic and because very fine uniform grain size is basically uh, there and the lack of uh, porosity all actually influence to get a good mechanical strength of the glass ceramics and of course it can be processed as a glass so in processing what the glass is processed the similar way this glass ceramic can also be processed but in this case if the they produce the crystalline structure in that case it is possible to perform the heat treatment of operation for the glass ceramic now there is uh, another important uh, component which is used the optical material that is called the fiber optics cable so there is a it is having wide applications in industry so here if you look into the picture there is a fiber optics cable so fiber optics cable is basically a type of the filament and of the transparent material used to transmit the light usually used to transmit the light the fiber optic cable can be utilized but in this case the center of the cable is referred to as the core 
so in this case usually code is the another uh, this uh, material and which is we can see that that code is designed in such a way or interface between code and the next layer such that it will try to able to total internal reflection is possible so that is the transmitting the this uh, light using the uh, optical uh, the fiber optics cable so it has the code has actually higher refractive index which is different between the refractive index of the code and the cladding core and the cladding means we can see this is the core and over the core there is a cladding layer also there so this is core cladding layer so there must be some significant amount of the refractive index differences between the cladding and the core material so we and uh, that differences makes it looks like a mirror like interface uh, which actually guides the this light along the core so therefore the light bounces through the core from one end to the another end according to the principle of the total internal reflection and actually that is actually governed by the laws of the light. So in that way we have to choose the material, we can process the material such that we can bring some kind of the differences of the refractive index, index between the core and the cladding element. Then only it will be act as an optical fiber, it will, this uh, high transmission of the laser light will be possible through the core. Now here you can get some understanding in this the, in, in this view of the cross section of the fiber optic cable. If you see there is a core is there, above which there is a cladding layer and above cladding is basically put some jacket and we can see the score, uh, the, the interface between the core and the cladding is the place in such a way that uh, it looks like the transparent material also. So this cladding is usually covered with a protective plastic or uh, polyvinyl chloride um, protective plastic and this jacket is basically this polyvinyl chloride jacket is usually put in case of the fiber optics cable. But in this case diameters of the core cladding and the jacket in this case can vary widely. There is a wide variation of this diameter of, of these three components the core cladding and jacket. Example single uh, fiber optics cable can have uh, core cladding and jacket of diameter. So core diameter is around 9 micrometer then uh, this uh, the cladding diameter can be 125 and uh, this jacket can be have 2, 250 micrometer. This is the usual uh, values of the three different components. But you can observe the core is exactly not the hollow part here. The core is actually the another material, particular material where it is like. But that core is basically chosen in such a way that it will try to transfer the uh, light efficiently. Now, there are fabrication techniques to produce the fiber optics cable. So here we can see one of the uh, uh, manufacturing technology is known as the double crucible method. So double crucible method in this case uh, the pair of the platinum crucible seats one side the other we can uh, we can use the so crucible seats use in this case and molten core glass is placed in the inner crucible. We can see there is an inner crucible another is outer one. So in the inner crucible is the this core material is placed and the outer crucible the cladding material is uh, placed both the silica but uh, in this case this can be the different types of the silica it is placed the silica and the cladding material are uh, placed uh, in, in this way. Now the crucible are kept the high temperature so this part is maintained at the high temperature just to bring the molten state of the silica usually 1850 degree centigrade to 2000 degree centigrade within that range. Now a precision fitting mechanism is used such that two glasses come together at the base of the outer crucible. So at the base of the outer crucible these two glasses you see the two glasses are come and the fiber is drawn out of the crucible. So here fiber is we can make a uh, this uh, fiber optics cable is gradually drawn and we, we actually different way we can this finally winding of the spool uh, this is the output uh, that means that as this can be supplied to the market. So we see there is a different control is the diameter control is there uh, using uh, this element a diameter measurement and monitor can also be system also there. Then the another part is the jacket size of the has to be maintained and jacket even jacket cutting system is also there because jacket uh, thickness has to be maintained here and the ja jacket diameter also uh, measure and monitoring system is also there and that this is because reaching the final product. So basically we are basically two silica different core silica and cladding silica are different because with the core material and the cladding material uh, this in these cases they are, are processed in such a that they must have to 
the refractive index would be different. So, that is why we can put the, the, the silica, the core material and the cladding material in the different way. Such the core inside the core, there is a one core section can be produced, the circular section, and the outside that there is another concentric circular section can also be produced of the, the cladding silica. Now, this is the one method just to produce the uh, this that uh, fiber optics cable. Then there is the other option also there chemical vapor deposition process can also be followed. In this case, chemical the we know the chemical vapor deposition is similar to fabrication steps also double crucible method. But in this case, in this case preform is required for the fiber drawing process. So, how it looks like in this case the rod tube procedure is used to prepare the uh, preform. So, rod type procedure is actually used in this case the rod of is actually core glass is placed inside a tube of the cladding glass. So, inside the tube of the cladding glass is the core glass is actually pressed uh, placed here and then oxides are deposits as a layers of the glass particles that is actually called soot. So, the soot is basically the um, the deposited oxides uh, that can as a layer in the form of a layer, but this actually is made from the glass particles. The soot is deposited on the outer rotating rod or inside the glass tube to produce the preform. So, that is produced the because, because of the soot is actually deposited. Then starting material can be a uh, solution of oxygen mixed with uh, SiCl4, GeCl4 or the or gaseous BeCl3, they are the starting material to produce the uh, this fiber optics cable. The deposition of the silica suit over the uh, the core, the, uh, it actually layer upon layer it forms and that actually for the homogeneous transparent material. So, here you can see the germanium dioxide and phosphorus pentoxide that actually increases the in refractive index of the glass. Similarly, boron oxide decreases the refractive index. So, we can choose the material. So, in such a way that refractive index can be differences between the core, core and the cladding material. So, here changing the composition of the mixture that uh, the process influence the refractive index profile of the power form. So, basically we have to look into the core and the cladding material. What are the refractive index profile? Uh, before processing we need to investigate actually then after that we can choose this particular material uh, for chemical vapor deposition process. Similarly, outside vapor deposition is also uh, in this case the outside vapor deposition also called the suit process and it was actually first uh, mass fabrication started uh, using the fiber drawing method uh, and OBD process is basically it is having the four different phases. One is the Lay, lay down. Lay down means materials that make up the core and cladding are vapor deposits around the rotating targeted job. So, we see there is a rotating target, uh, the suit actually deposits over the rotating targeted job. So, here you can see the mixture of uh, O2 is passes here SiCl4 and then in the gas mixture is there, this and mixture is there and then uh, we can pass through here and then burner is there, create the flame and we allow to deposit the suit material over the this rod base material and then uh, gradually the deposited material it brings the certain thickness of the uh, cladding component. So, lay down is the one steps then consolidation is basically this target uh, rod is removed and then a drawing operation the preform is attached to the precision feed mechanism that feeds into the furnace at a control speed and the measurement finally each fiber really is basically tested for the compliance with the fiber characteristics given in the data sheet. So, this is the simple outside vapor de deposition uh, can bring the certain thickness of the material. Similarly, vapor axial deposition in this case vapor axial deposition another form of the outside deposition. So, in this also having four steps one is the deposition phase. So, deposition phase we see the silica particles are obtained from a reaction among the gases in the heated zone. So, among the gases in the uh, this heated zone, the silicon particles actually reacted here and it can be deposited. So, particles are deposited at the bottom of the target, you can see bottom of the target uh, or the seed rod and then this the rod is basically the target rod is rotates and moves gradually upward. It is this rod is basically this is the basically seed rod and this is rotated and gradually 
uh, it can move upward direction and in that case is that there is a deposition of the silica core uh, is possible the from the from the bottom side so this from the porous preform but heating phase the upper end of the porous preform is heated so this is the porous preform this is porous preform so upper part is actually heated in the ring furnace so this is the heater so that actually known as the ring furnace and this can be utilized for the heating the upper part and this procedure is a solid silica uh, preform is possible in this case the solid silica preform is possible but drawing and measurement is the drawing and the measurement tips are actually similar to the deposition process unlike the process that the uh, vapor axial deposition does not involve any central hole so that is one advantage of, of this particular process and then refractive index profile that is how we can see the form using the many burners so here the direction of the flow of a specific gas mixture can be changed so usually when try to think there is a mark of the for using the many burner the mark can be uh, observed on the on the component so this that basically informs the refractive indi index so here produces both the step index and the grain fiber profiles in this case but deposited particle density can vary due to the temperature gradient in the uh, plane perpendicular to the core axis so perpendicular to the core axis there might be the possibility to the of the particle density variation because of the temperature gradient that can be the another problem associated with that similarly plasma chemical vapor deposition process also there uh, in this case the plasma activated chemical deposition p c v d process which is actually developed by 1975 and, uh, and now but what are the steps here the energy source the instead of the heating the outside of the silica tube here the high power microwave can be used in this case so high power uh, microwave units that produce the ionized gas or plasma inside the tube so that it create the transverse microwave cavity in this case that actually try to create the the ionized gas plasma inside the tube now non isothermal plasma in the microwave frequency range is used instead of the torch of a or a flame so instead of the torch or flame here the microwave is used and uh, non isothermal plasma in the microwave frequency range is basically used in this particular case deposition phase the plasma makes the reaction pro proceed above the 1000 degree to 12 up to 1200 degree centigrade in this case very thin layer is deposited over the tube but temperature and deposition rate this the method allow layer to be grown relatively low temperature actually layer usually go at relatively low temperature and the deposition rate is usually slower uh, compared to the other method so that is the one important aspect associated with this uh, plasma chemical vapor deposition process and production capability this process can produce a large preform capable of producing very few hundred kilometers of fiber uh, using this particular process so long long fiber uh, optics can be created using the plasma chemical vapor deposition process now i'll try to look into the case study the in this case i'll do the developing of a novel single crystal uh, crystalline optical materials using the micro pulling down method so it is also one important the micro pulling down method we'll try to look into this what way this uh, uh, crystalline optical materials can be produced using this method so micro pulling down method is basically the melt growth technique from the melting the growth technique and part of the uh, step knob method it is basically shaped crystal growth method shape crystal growth method, directly you can take the any shape of the crystal not like uh, what you see the single crystal method we observe that you can produce a, a single crystal but mostly are the cylindrical the symmetrical structure but in this case any kind of the shape uh, of the crystal can be produced growth uh, following this micro pulling down method and in this case the gross single crystal using the small amount of the raw material typically so that means seed material is very very small in this case it can be less than one gram so that from the seed material the single crystal can grow growth time is around 5 to 12 hours and growth speed is around 0 0.05 to 1 millimeter per minute and unique tool in this actually ideal for the very rapid screening for the single crystalline materials because in this case it is actually growth rate is relatively higher as compared to the other single crystal production method but role of the crucible is that it acts as a both container for the melt 
and the shaper at the act as a shape shape means the act as a die basically so as per the shape of the die the single crystal can grow grow so that is the both role can be performed by the crucible here advantages the produces the device size uh, match crystal in the various forms the any form it can produce the fibers it can produce the rod it can plates it can produce the tube so different different geometry can be produced using this this uh, micro pulling down method and at the same time uh, this there might not be require any kind of the machining operation uh, if you follow uh, this uh, particular process origin of the micro pulling down method is proposed by this oinesi uh, dr oinesi at the electrochemical laboratory in japan that actually they actually proposed this method and, and they actually i can say that developed this uh, micro pulling down method uh, for the uh, single crystal structure of any shape depending upon the, the component size so micro pulling down method with the resistive heating so in this case heating process can be done in the resistive heating so here and the crystal nozzle and the diameter ratio can be adjustable it can range between the 0 0.2 to 1 here you can see this is the melt and here the resistive heating is there and pulling down mechanism and crystal grown crystal we can see this is the grown crystal and here you can see the resistive crucible with the nozzle 0.5 to 2 millimeter in diameter they can be used you can the schematic of the uh, this micro pulling down method we can see here so crystal is uh, post growth procedure in this case the crystal is separated from the molten zone and pull down at a cooling rate of 10 to 50 degree centigrade per minute and crystal is then removed from the holder so pre post growth procedure so cooling rate post growth process cooling rate can reach up to 10 to 50 degree centigrade and then crystal is removed from the holder again cooling rate for the fiber material the unlike the bulk material the slow cooling rate is not necessary for the fibers in this case because there is a hardly the temperature difference is there uh, between the core and the peripheral part so therefore here we can this method can be used more faster rate cooling rate can be little more as compared to the other method seed heating in this case the seeds are heated before growth at the relatively high you know any single crystal structure production we st start from the seed material so in this cases but heating of the seed is also required but uh, before growth but in this case relatively high rate for growth at a relatively high rate so that will try to produce the this micro pulling down method efficiently now ce pr f3 crystal in this case the single crystal growth were grown in the ce con concentration of uh, this different values you can using the micro pulling down this is an experiment is actually performed with the different ce concentration and in micro pulling down method but in the four impurity fluoride powders are used in the growth experiment also in this case but we see observe the crystal characteristic is like that crystals are transparent with the greenish color so that is the observation and except cef3 all are actually colorless so but in this case crystal are tra transparent with the greenish color diameter can be reach up to three in this case in this experiment diameter can go three millimeter and length can go up to 15 to 50 millimeter but in this case no visible inclusions or cracks actually observed in this single crystal growth structure so uh, here we have tried to explain the processing of the optical materials and in this case mostly processing of the glass but i have just tried to give you the overview of the glass because most of the methods is already explained the different uh, modules and apart from this thing we try to explain uh, this the uh, what uh, how can construct uh, manufacture the um, uh, fiber optics cable and of course in this case that is an case study will try to explain the one of the um, good method that is the micro pulling down method to produce the single crystal structure and which is mostly used in case of the um, this uh, processing of the optics material but this micro pulling down method more advantage is that we can produce the uh, any any different kind of the shape from this thing just to and can avoid the machining operation to get the actual size of the component of a single crystal structure so that's all so thank you very much uh, for your kind attention.